In this video, I'm going to use a potentiometer to control a servo, where when you turn the potentiometer, the servo horn will also turn in synchrony. The potentiometer is connected to the ADC, the analog digital converter. The number that is captured from the analog to digital converter is fed into a PWM signal to modify the duty cycle that will control the servo's horn. Let's start by creating a new project in the co-IDE. We want to select the microcontroller that we're using. Click on new project and I'm going to name this project control servo with a potentiometer on ADC. We need to select the correct components for this project and we always want to select the the cube lib file which automatically adds the CMSIS core library as well. As you can see that the CMSIS core library was installed. We also want to add the C library because I'm using that in the LCD functions. The repository and welcome screen isn't really needed anymore so we can get rid of those. And if you double click on the main.c, you'll see our skeleton code appear. In order to display information on the LCD, access the ADC and set the PWM, we need to add the libraries or header files created through this tutorial series. I'm simply going to add the header files from their respective projects, since those will be the files that are up to date and have the latest features. I'm starting with the PWM functions. So all you have to do is right click on the main project and click on add files, navigate to their project folder and then the app folder to find the header file. I'll next do the LCD functions and finally the ADC header file. We now have all of the header files added. Now we can start including them in the project. We first need to include the stm32f0xx.h file, and that will contain all the registers that we need to control the features of the microcontroller. Next, we need to include the LCD functions. Next, we can include the adc.h file. And finally, we can include the PWM functions. In the main function, we're going to add some initialization functions from the LCD and setting up the LCD display, the ADC, and we want to select the channel for the ADC, which is specifying a specific pin that is going to be receiving the analog signal. And the PWM has to be set up with the proper prescaler PWM duty cycle and the PWM period. In this case, we're using a prescaler of three and a period of 40,000. To make sure that we're not gonna start off the servo in extreme position, we're gonna start off with the duty cycle at 1800, which is the low end for the servo. Let's go ahead and set up the LCD so it can display the number that is converted from the ADC. In this part of the program, we just need to add a label signifying on the LCD what we're going to be showing. I'm going to simply just put ADC on the display and nothing on the second line. Within the while loop, we need to capture the ADC conversion. And to start the conversion, we'll use the control register and the bit called AD start. Right when you invoke the AD start bit, the microcontroller is going to start to go through a process of conversion. So we want to look at a particular bit that will be set by the hardware that is called the end of conversion. So let's put in a while loop that tests for this bit. The conversion has been completed. After this while loop, the conversion is ready, so we can actually use the number that is stored that represents this conversion, specifically in this case, the potentiometer's position. So let's go ahead and display this number on the LCD right after the ADC colon on the display. And that location is 5 on the first line, which is line 0. The converted number is stored in the DR register under the ADC1, and that is called the data register. We can simply just take that number and display it. Since the number will be a maximum of 4,095, uh, I'm only using five digits. 
Let's see if our conversion works and the number correctly displays on the LCD. You can build the program and then flash the microcontroller. It looks like there's an error and it looks like it has to do with the LCD send an integer function. It looks like I used a parentheses around the actual parameters, which makes it look like there's only a single parameter. So removing these parentheses will hopefully fix the error. Let's try building it again and see if it works. There's no errors, so we can go ahead and flash the microcontroller. The microcontroller was flashed. Let's see if it works. The ADC number seems to be changing when I turn the potentiometer. Let's see if the range works from 0 to 4095. So it looks like it goes all the way up to 4095. And it goes all the way down to 0. Now we want to do a little bit of math to make sure that the ADC number is not going to go outside of the constraints of the PWM duty cycle that the servo will accept. The ADC has a range from 0 to 4095 from one extreme of the potentiometer to the other. And the servo has a range from 1800 to 4200. That comes out to 2400, so our width of our PWM cannot exceed 2400, and it has to start at 1800. So we want to take the 4095 and reduce that range to 2400. So let's determine the coefficient we need to establish this range. So it looks like it comes out to approximately 0.586. So if we multiply 0.586 by 4095, we should get the correct range. Let's go ahead and plug this into our code where we show it on the LCD. So we can determine if this coefficient is correct. Looks like there's no errors in the code. So we can go ahead and flash the microcontroller and test the output. It can immediately be seen that the number is different. It's at, in the 800s, where it was before it was in the 1300s, I believe. And let's go ahead and go all the way up and down on the potentiometer. It looks like we have the correct range. It went to 2399 and down to zero. Now we need to add the 1800 to this number. So let's contain the multiplication we just did and then add 1800 to it. So the order of operations is done correctly. This should shift the value on the ADC up 1800. So the range now will be 1800 to 4200. So let's build and flash the microcontroller and see if this works. So let's test the range of the potentiometer. Let's see if we get 1800 on the low end. Yep, and 4200 on the high end. There we go, 4199 is close enough. So now let's use the servo as our output device. The new computation number, the ADC multiplied by the 0.586 plus the 1800 can be plugged into the PWM duty cycle portion of the function. This is a sub function that I created just to modify the prescaler period and duty cycle. So let's plug in the three, the 40,000, and we can copy and paste the number that we are displaying in the LCD and plug it right into the duty cycle input on that function. Even though I don't have the servo connected to the circuit, I want to build and flash the microcontroller anyway so the circuit will be ready for the servo. To connect the servo to the PWM output, I'm connecting a hookup wire from the signal in of the servo to the PWM out on the microcontroller. Connect the ground of the servo to the ground rail on the breadboard to serve as a common ground. This will provide the ground that the PWM signal will need. The servo will get its power from four AA batteries. The positive side will go to the servo, and the negative will go to the common ground. After plugging in the programmer to provide power to the circuit, the circuit should function correctly. When the potentiometer is turned, the servo should turn with the potentiometer. If the outer potentiometer leads were wired in reverse, one going to VCC and the other going to ground, then you might have the opposite happen 
When you turn the potentiometer one way, the servo may turn the other direction. I hope you enjoyed this experiment as much as Snickers did. Thank you for watching.